This webcast is on the topic of health surveillance and is the fifth in a series of five webcasts on the topic of hand-on vibration, assessment and management. After viewing this webcast, you'll have an understanding on the purpose of health surveillance, when health surveillance is required and a tiered approach to health screening. The purpose of health surveillance is about having procedures to detect work-related ill health at an early stage and acting on the results. The main aim are to safeguard the health of employees, including identifying and protecting people at increased risk and also to check the long-term effectiveness of control measures. In the case of hand-on vibration, one of the specific aims is to prevent employees developing hand-on vibration syndrome or for short, halves, which is associated with disabling loss of hand function. It is possible that employees who are exposed to vibration may already have mild symptoms of halves and they're not aware of it, uh, and health surveillance can help them to recognise that the first symptoms of halves have started to develop. Health surveillance is required if work activities expose employees to hand on vibration. By law, employees must assess the risk, and if the risk assessment shows that employee health is likely to be at risk, then an employee must take action, as we've shown here in the three key points. Health surveillance should be provided for vibration exposed employees who are likely to be regularly exposed above the exposure action value or EAV. Also, if exposure is occasionally above the EAV, and where the risk assessment identifies that the frequency and severity of exposure may pose a risk to health. And also, if an employee already is uh, diagnosed with halves, even when exposed below the action value. To carry out health surveillance, you need to ensure that you achieve an effective health surveillance program in the workplace, including cooperation from employees. When you do plan to introduce health surveillance, explain to your employees uh, union representatives and safety representatives, what you're proposing to do and give them the opportunity to comment on your proposals. Uh, employees need to be given information about the reasons for carrying out your health surveillance and they do need to understand their roles and responsibilities. A simple approach to health surveillance can involve working through a number of stages or, as we're about to show, tiers. Tier 1 is a health surveillance program which needs to include an initial assessment, which can be downloaded from the HC website. And this is for any new or existing employee before they begin exposure to hand-on vibration. Uh, one reason for this is that a baseline should be available from which to judge the results of routine health surveillance. And the baseline assessment forms Tier 1. New employees or those changing jobs who will be exposed for the first time should be given suitable information about the hazards of hand-on vibration, preferably before they give information related to their medical records. Uh, this will help to alert employees to the potential health consequences of failing to report symptoms of HAVs. Tier 1 also provides uh, an opportunity to educate workers about measures under an employee's control uh, that will help to reduce the risk from transmission of vibration. Tier 2 Again, it's a short questionnaire which can be downloaded from the HD website and should be performed once a year after the commencement of employment. And again, it's to help identify if they need to be referred to Tier 3 due to showing signs of halves. Uh, this questionnaire should be repeated annually to form the routine health surveillance for employees who are at risk but have not yet reported any symptoms suggestive of halves. It is useful to have a responsible person appointed as part of the health surveillance program to help communicate to the employees how the screening questionnaire operates. Such a person should be carefully selected to have experience of the working environment. So to be able to gain the confidence and cooperation of employees, they need not be qualified, but should have received training from an occupational health professional and understand the health surveillance procedures and importance of confidentiality. Tier 3 is for a qualified person such as an occupational health nurse to provide a clinical assessment and if this shows that an employer has halves 
then tier 4 will apply. Tier 4 is where formal diagnosis is made by the doctor. Formal diagnosis is required for certain actions, including reporting by employers of cases under RIDOS 1995 and fitness for work recommendations. Uh, doctors can help considerably in the reporting process by using the precise description of the disease listed in the regulations so that employers will be able to identify immediately whether the case is reportable. The reporting of injuries, disease and dangerous occurrences regulation 1995 or RIDOR for short, place a duty on an employer to report any cases of HABs arising from certain work activities or of carpal tunnel syndrome associated with exposure to vibration. The duty comes into effect when an employer receives a formal written diagnosis from a doctor confirming that the employer has either of these conditions. The duty comes into effect when an employer receives a formal written diagnosis from a doctor confirming that the employee has either of these conditions and that there is reason to believe that the disease is likely to have had an occupational origin. Before reporting HABs, you should check that your employee is currently doing a job involving one of the specific activities listed in Schedule 3 of RIDOR. You're also required to keep details of any report you make for at least three years. It may also be appropriate for you to advise your employee that the vascular form of vibration white finger and carpal tunnel syndrome are both prescribed diseases under the Industrial Injuries Disablement Benefit Scheme. Tier 5 is not required as part of a routine health surveillance provision for a workforce exposed to hand or vibration, but it is considered to be potentially useful for studying the progression of the disease. So this slide shows the flow of the health surveillance process that we've just covered. This slide focuses on the training and there are various ways you can provide employees with information on HABs such as booklets, webinars, toolbox talks, one-to-one uh, -one discussions, training sessions. But regardless of the method of delivery, there are certain things that an employer should make sure employees are informed about. Some of these may be general such as what HABS is about and how it can affect them, and some be maybe you know more specific to their workplace setting, such as what measures you've taken to reduce their exposure to have. Um, this slide provides a summary of the information or training you should provide. To arrange health surveillance, it consists of frequently seeking information about early symptoms of ill health by using a questionnaire. It may help you keep costs down if you carry out this function yourself, referring any positive responses to an occupational health service provider. Alternatively, you could ask an occupational health service provider to provide a complete service on your behalf. It is essential that health professionals involved in health surveillance for HAVs can demonstrate that they have the necessary expertise. Specialist training is required to carry out adequate clinical assessments to avoid misdiagnosing symptoms of HAVs. You should be able to find details of occupational health service providers from trade associations, the internet, or your nearest HSC office. So once you have the results of your health surveillance, what should you do? Well, you need to keep the records of your health surveillance and fitness for work advice, and the confidential medical records should be kept with a doctor. Um, you also need to make sure that the records are always available to employees and safety inspectors and also any recommendations made by a doctor about employees continued exposure to vibration you should act upon. Um, also the results of health surveillance may mean that you should perhaps revise your risk assessments and your measure of controls uh, but if you do so you do then need to discuss these changes with your trade union and or safety representative and finally if you do receive writing by a doctor that an employee has HAVS or carpal tunnel syndrome, then you do need to notify the relevant enforcing authority. So in summary, you need to carry out health surveillance when employees are regularly exposed to exposure above the EAV. But the Control of Vibration at Work Regulations 2005 requires employees to provide suitable health surveillance where the risk assessment indicates a risk to workers' health. 
So in any case, work is likely to be exposed in excess of the daily exposure action value should be under suitable health surveillance. So on this last slide is a list of useful links to download information on health surveillance. Uh, thank you for listening and I hope you found this webcast useful.